Uh, welcome back to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> welcome back, my little nightmares. It's me, Queen Nightmare, and I'm going to be reading Snary today. And um, I just want to tell you something. Um, I had to edit my last video over ten minutes of cut out footage, not footage, but us speaking because it was so in bad taste. I was just like, yikes! Because first of all, there were underage drinking in that video. I might be docked for this, but who cares? There was, there was, and I was, I was like, uh, talk about it. And about, you know, the devil's lettuce, and I I couldn't put that in. I was just like, oh, brother, and what happened, and why we can't be friends with a certain someone anymore. So, I edited most of that out, so you only hear us saying that we can't invite, um, Uh, Elena anymore to my house or anywhere with us anymore and that's because she did something that's unforgivable to me I gave her another chance but she would not let it go and I can't I just can't deal with that negativity so as we go on (laughs) and we're going to read the scenario story sorry that's really awkward but um uh I'm wondering if he's catching feelings. We're on the one, oh, how many chapters now? There's 31 of them. Please tell me they get together soon. And then they can be together for the rest of whatever. Because I want them to be together. I wonder if you guys want them too. I'm still looking for what chapter we're on. <laughs> no! Damn it. Um, I'm sorry. But, here, let me say something. If you really do like this um, channel, thank you. Um, chapter 15, 16. Okay. So, it's 17, 18. Cool. Got it. We're already half over halfway through. I hope they get together soon. <laughs> So, chapter 17, to no one's surprise, Rita Skater wasted no time, jumped on her assignment. She must have worked through the night as Luna produced a copy of the, uh, is it Quibbler? Because I think that's a Q, <laughs> I'm not too sure, at breakfast. Harry held the paper up to Snape to see. Interesting headline, isn't it, Professor? Oh, wait, no, that's me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Interesting headline, isn't it, Professor Snape? Uh, Professor Snape glared over at Harry and impressed. <laughs> I would hide behind the paper afterwards and just cry. <laughs> he held Harry's eye for a moment in a silent rebuke. Harry dropped the paper and Harry quickly picked. Uh, Ron quickly picked it up. Fudge, uncaring or incompetent, Ron read. I think it's bloody brilliant. Hermione nudged Ron and whispered something to him. With a sigh, he too lowered the paper, despite the necessity of keeping their role in the article a secret. All the students wore uh, wore a mood to celebrate. The article had called for an investigation into Fudge's administration. Skeeter had gone so far as to suggest that it was Fudge's Steadfast refusal to even consider Voldemort's return that had allowed it to happen. Inside the paper was an in-depth account of all the evidence Fudge had dismissed as a rumor. Attention was drawn to the fact that the investigation into Umbridge's time as headmaster had revealed that both Harry Dum- and Dumbledore were- had warned of the Dark Lord's rising. Criticism stopped short of accusing Fudge of supporting Voldemort, but only just barely. Breakfast was a high-spirited affair. Dumbledore arrived late for breakfast for the second day in a row. Is he fucking someone? Sorry. That's in bad taste. I'm very sorry. Is he, like, with someone? Is he getting his, like, is he knocking boots or something? That's my question. Is that is that what's happening? Because he's becoming late. Good morning, all. Mrs. Le- um, 
Miss Lovegood, it is most excellent to see you doing well. Thank you, Headmaster, she answered. It would appear that your... Dumbledore paused and gazed at the students collected there. Father has stirred up a good, good deal of trouble. He does that, yes, sir, Luna <laughs> said, smiled shyly. I will be absent for the rest of the day. I have been called to the ministry. Headmaster, do you think um, people will take the story seriously? I have been informed that the Daily Prophet is picking up the story for evening edition and will be calling for the ministry minister's resignation. Hell yes! Sorry. <laughs> that was even more bad taste. I'm sorry. But it, I'm just so... Ha I did not like... Well, I didn't like the character. I did like the actor who played him, but the character was... Oh! Nerve-wracking. He will certainly have much to answer for. Assuming Fudge had few answers to give, Harry was satisfied for the time being. I suppose he does. After the meal... Snape asked Harry to stay in the Great Hall as the others left. With the term about to begin, I trust you are aware that our usual routine must end, Snape said. The summer is over, after all. Back to reality, so to speak. <sighs> oh, yes, sir, I suppose I understand. With all the students around and everything. Head til Snape tilted his head head with a smirk. Finally, he let out a, sm a single low chuckle. I believe you are mistaken, Harry. I am referring to your lessons. You are doing better than p uh, passable work in potions. If you take the time to revise what we did not get to, I think you will discover your understanding will c continue to improve. I, certain I certainly expect significantly significantly fuck <laughs> significantly better work from you this term combat training will continue in some fashion though with me or whomever albus decides upon for defense re remains to be seen either way it will not be daily as for occlumency i have taught as much as I can. You have demonstrated as much control over your bond as I believe is possible. You certainly sh should be able to shield yourself from the intrusions of last year. You can still win through. Um, still win through, though? What? Harry pointed out. My shields eventually wear, all, wear out. That is inevitable against my, uh, any wizard of skill and power. Occlumency is no match for legomancy. At least not in a pitched in a pitched attack since I have used against you. To be blunt, if you are restrained long enough to undergo the kind of prolonged mental attacks I staged, then legomancy will likely not be used. Verita serum and physical torture is more likely as it does not leave the in interrogator as vulnerable. You can protect yourself from the Dark Lord, which is the most important result. Harry nodded in understanding. The combat training was supposed to keep him from ending up in a situation where Verita serum or torture could be used. So he was covering those bases as well. Snape went on. I assume you believed I meant that my treatment of you would change with start of class. As for that, I have already c explained to you that I will n not tolerate you your advantage of any relaxed relationship with m we may share. When school starts, you will treat me with the same respect as any other professor. Harry nodded again. This was beginning to feel like a lecture. Snape considered Harry's tense posture and leaned back in his own chair. Honestly, Harry, I do not expect many problems of your nature. 
You have been respectful to your other teachers, and I am confident that you have both relegated our past to where it belongs. This summer, you you were only disrespectful a handful of times, as those times were percept, uh, percepti- precipitated for by your own behavior, there should be no further problems between us. Do you agree? It seemed that Snape was offering some kind of a- apology, or if an apology, it was at least an offer to begin fresh. And Harry had no objection to that. I, I do, sir. And I also understand why you were angry at me that day in the kitchen. You were right. I was showing off for my friends. I promise not to accuse you of acting mysterious or broading in class. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. If you promise, <clears throat> if you promise, if you break that promise, be sure, um, be sure do as l- so late in the year. There is little fun in deducting several hundred points from Gryffindor before you have had a chance to earn that many. Harry grinned. Do I have to pretend to still hate you? Though, we were talking about this last night, actually. Luna's never really disliked you, and I won't get into how interesting I find that, but the rest of us have made it pretty clear We figure there are reasons to keep everything a secret, and reasons not to. And those reasons are... Snape steepled his fingers. uh, Steepled? Is it stipled? I've never heard of that. There are some words that I don't know that are actual words. (laughs) That are probably not. Um... Uh, misspellings, because it could just be me not knowing a lot of words. His fingers and gazed at Harry. The boy had the dis- distinct feeling that Snape already knew both sides of the argument, but wanted to see what the students had come up with. Well, the Dark Lord probably hasn't made what happened the other night common knowledge. He definitely wouldn't want other Death Eaters thinking that there's some way to, um, some way they can escape the mark. That means they may not be looking for you, or if they are, they don't know why, and that can only make you safer. On the other hand, if we spread the word that you've been a spy for years, we've been discovered, and despite a rather painful attempt at punishment. Still quite alive, that may help people see that Voldemort's not invincible. It also may bring other Death Eaters here looking to defect. Uh, looking de- to defect. That is some conf- say. That is the same conclusion I have arrived at. My inclination is to make some of my story known to the general public. At the very least, it should be leaked that a spy was discovered and saved. If we are seen to be getting along, there will be assumptions made that I am said spy. But I really don't care either way. I will speak to Albus. He may see another angle we have missed. And you realize, Harry, that if the students notice any changes, it will be you and your friends, not me. Who are questions about it. That's no problem. I We can tell them whatever we want, really. The truth, or some of it at least, is probably okay. You tutored me in potions. We got to know each other better, and we stopped hating each other. None of us are going to talk about the combat training or the Occumency lessons, obviously. All are all really good stories from the summer involve me screaming and passing out at some point. I don't think we want Voldemort knowing that was going on when he wasn't doing it 
doing it to me on purpose. The stories about you passing out are the good ones? Well, they're more interesting than the ones about Hagrid making breakfast. That depends upon how the story is rated. If danger is a major factor, then breakfast by Hagrid is um, fascinating. I suppose so. The Dark Lord or Hagrid's homemade sausage, it's a toss-up. Harry grinned foolishly and grew, then grew serious as a thought struck him. Professor? <laughs> Sorry, I had a sneeze. <laughs> Do you know if the headmaster's going to the ministry going to the ministry is a secret? It is common knowledge. His presence was officially requested by Amelia, Amelia Bones. The whizzing knock mock hmm <laughs> whiz ing ma mot I think it's a German word. I'm not very good in German except of Wolfswagen. That's it, and I'm good. <laughs> we'll likely be meeting to discuss discuss Ambridge. Why? Well the Dark Lord probably knows about it, right? It seems to me that he might try testing your mark then. The thought had occurred to me as well. And you were going to let me run off with everyone else and not say anything? Harry raised an eyebrow at Snape in a pure, um, poor imitation of the other man. That was exactly what I intended on doing. It is not, not your duty to hover over me waiting for my mark to burn. I had no intentions of hovering, actually. Weren't there a few potions you wanted me to try out during the summer that were, but were too dangerous? Can't I do that while you get ready for the start of the term? Very well. If you want to spend the day in the dungeon, how am I to object? I'll just tell everyone where I'll be and join you down there in a little bit, if that's okay. Harry said, this is like two lovers making a plan to run off together like, or have a secret meeting, if you know what I mean. But am I wrong? Is that what it's sounding like? <laughs> like, they've done this before, but in other cases. I'm kidding. I'm just picking, you know. <laughs> and when are they going to fall in love? This is bothering me. I want them to fall in love. And then, like, the story will go on with their love. It's not like it's the main part of it, which I'm fine with. <laughs> Harry said and ran off to, to find his friends. He found them behind the tapestry in the library, exactly where he had expected them. Hermione already had a stack of books in front of her. The other five were seated in a corner. Hey, Harry, Neville called out. What do you think um what do you think of teaching um us teaching Luna about what we learned this summer? I wouldn't know how to teach all the physical stuff, but she can probably learn the spells easily easily enough. I think that's a great idea, Neville. I can't do it today, but the rest of you can. I'm going to spend the day in the dungeon, I think. With Dumbledore gone, Voldemort will probably try to something with the, his mark. All day with Snape? Boy, Harry, you can't catch a break, can you? Ron asked. I thought you'd be free of him now that we're back at school. He isn't that bad, Ron, Harry said. The redhead looked scandalized. Come on, really, you have to admit he ha- ha- um, he wasn't nearly as mean this summer. Tough, maybe, but he was he was teaching us how to defend ourselves, after all. You can't be too nice when when um when you do that, I suppose. No more insults though. I suppose Ron admitted grud- uh, grudgingly. Do you w- want us to go down with there with you? Ginny Ginny might uh, Ginny wanted to help wanted help with a few spells we learned so we can all get in some practice. 
it doesn't matter where and her mind and her mind is lost in her books so she's she'd probably be happy to see us somewhere else as Hermione did, did not even look up to mention to the mention at her name, Harry had the feeling she ha- would not notice if they stayed or left. He was comfort comfort um comforted knowing she was on the uh, on the problem so enthusiastically. He considered Ron's offer and appreciated that his friend was willing to spend the day in the in enemy territory just to keep him company. Better not, Ron. Uh, it's bad enough he'll have to put up with me. If we all showed up, he might decide he'd rather risk Voldemort. Luna giggled and Harry made made for the dungeon. The rest of the morning passed, much as Summer had. Harry um, worked on a few potions with a little trouble, only pausing now and then to ask Snape when the textbook's information was unsatisfactory. He had lost track of time when his stomach reminded him that breakfast had been a long time ago. Shortly after, Snape returned from his office, um, followed by a house elf. Snape gestured to his desk, and the house elf snapped its fingers, causing several platters. Wow, to um, and two places, two place settings, to appear. Harry's eyes grew. You didn't hear my stomach from your office, did you? With a chuckle, a Snape replied, No, my hearing is not quite so acute. After so many years of teaching, however, I am well acquainted, acquainted with the needs of a 16-year-old boy's bodies. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in. I did. I'm so sorry. I am such a dirty minded, horrible person. <laughs> if someone just heard that sentence, it's all over, my dude. It's all over. Snape's tone did not bear any hint of irony, but Harry found himself blushing at the remark nonetheless. Same! I ain't gonna lie. My, f- like, the first two people I thought were hot in the, well, like, I kind of liked one person, but I definitely thought I wanted to marry one. I was about 10 years old. I know this is, like, it's going to be a short story, so don't worry about it. Um, that I actually um, found the potion master, uh, Snape. My mom... No, my grandma, here's the story. My grandma asked me who I like most in the story. And I said, I want to marry one of them. And she's like, really? I'm about like seven, ten. I don't remember how old I was. She goes, who? I said, Snape. She said, the 40-year-old? I went, yeah. (laughs) He's adorable. (laughs) I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with me as a child? Oh, man. Yes, I would date Snape. Mm -hmm. He was my type. Still is, apparently. When the potion master master noticed his reaction, he merely rolled his eyes and sat down. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Harry pulled a chair over to the other side of the desk and surveyed the meal. Noticing the only drink available was tea, he said, You fought the cream, Professor, and you're usually so thorough. Cream? Tif- typical. I should have expected you would wish to destroy the tea. I will have the house elf bring some. Mocking how I make my tea, Professor, isn't that stretching things a bit? Oh, I think not. I have insulted you far, for far less. Uh, I don't put any. I don't put anything in my tea, so I'm just like Snape. So. <laughs> Yeah, you're ho- you're ruining the tea flavor. Shame on you. The, an elf brought the cream, and the two ate in comfortable silence until Harry looked up to see Snape nearly dropping his fork in his lap. The man started um, quickly, put his utensils down, and rested his arms arms on the table. He was about to ask something was wrong when he noticed his arm was not resting on the table but pressing against it. The mark, he thought, and then reached over to take his professor's wrist. Snape allowed his arm to be pulled across the, across the desk. As Snape, 
a um, as Harry took a deep breath, then slid his hand up the older man's sleeve. The pain was worse this time. Harry assumed Voldemort ha- had been building it up slowly as a test. He did not suffer long, though, as the pain disappeared within moments of him making contact. Snape pulled his arm out of Harry's grasp, and the young man once again sat in his own body. Harry found himself annoyed. Were you planning on telling me the mark was burning? The worse it gets, the more uh, the more both of us end up in pain, you know. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Snape said calmly, I was not going to tell you. For all I know, he was calling a meeting. He was simply caught up in it. I was simply caught up in it. And even so, while I, w- I will not refuse your help, I will absolutely not ask you for it. Are you really that stubborn? Too proud to admit your own pain? Harry grew, grew even more frustrated. How could he help the man if he refused to let him know when he was under an attack? If you wish to call it a stubborn pride, you may do so. The potion master finished his tea, then stood and returned to his office. Harry remained at the desk, staring at his tea, as if to heat it up by force of will. Finally, he st- um, finally his tea gone cold. He stood and stepped into the doorway of Snape's office. He watched the man work for several minutes. Snape did not look up. You can say it, say it if you'd like, Harry eventually offered. What exactly do you think I would like to say? That I have some nerve getting mad at someone for not asking for help. The irony is not lost at me, on me. Snape looked up and studied his student, but said nothing. Harry held his gaze and then continued. It's just a little more pain for me, Professor. I get a lot of more than that leaking through my scar when he's really mad. You know that. It can lead to much worse, though. So doesn't it make sense for you to mention it as soon as the mark starts up? Listen listen to yourself, Harry. You're arguing that your life is as full is so full of pain. I shouldn't worry about adding a little more. Whereas I see that as all the more reason to give you some from to save you from what little I can. And if he kills you because I wasn't fast fast enough to stop him. How much pain do you think I'll be in then? Harry crossed his arms and leaned against the doorframe. If you don't let me help you, I'll blame myself for your death, just to spite you. It has to pass. It has passed, Harry. He will not try again, I imagine. You can join your friends in the library. That was a dismissal. But Harry persisted. And if he does it does try again today, or tomorrow, or whenever he whenever will you tell me? We will have to wait and see, won't we? Snape's voice had an edge to it, but Harry did not back down and did not leave the doorway. He held his ground as the man glared at him. Snape shuffled his papers in front of him and said I will be more accustomed to asking for help, no more accustomed as to asking for help tomorrow than I am today. We will see, we will have to wait and see. Unsatisfied, but knowing that was the best answer Snake could give, Harry asked, Can I stay in the classroom? I still have a few more potions I want to try. That is up to you. Just be sure to mind the time and clean up before dinner. 
And so the last days of summer drifted by. Some progress had been made in tracking down the unknown spells used in the markings, but Flitwick still worried that something was missing. Unless one of the as yet unrecognized incantations sorry incantations proved to be extraordinarily powerful or complex. There was no way to account for the way the spell behaved as a single unit. And until the mysteries mystery was solved, any attempt to unra- uh, unravel the spells they knew of could more um could be more disastrous than leaving Snape marked. So, work continued, and Harry found his days spent either battling with his friends or being frustrated in the library. He and everyone else still held hope. Harry was keeping the Dark Lord at bay, and the facility was so busy preparing for the beginning of the term that they had little time to spare. The good news was that once things calmed down, even more effort could be expended. Outside of Hogwarts, Fudge was coming under attack from all sides. After Umbridge's trial, more and more ministry officials had come forward to the press, bringing tales of poor judgment, stubborn denials of Voldemort's rising, and gross mismanagement of many departments. The Daily Prophet was reminding everyone of the countless empty assurances Fudge had given the wizard wizarding world while managing to ignore its own role in lulling the populace into a false sense of peace fudge had taken a, a leave of absence and amelia bones was acting was named acting minister few expected him to resume his duties bones first act a, first act of minister was to um, formally declare martial law in all wizarding communities. As such, on the first day of school, a team of Aurors, headed by Shacklebot Bolt, headed by Shacklebolt, descend- descended upon plat- uh, platform nine and three quarters, and rode the Hogwarts Express as a precautionary measure. A dozen of wizards hovered on brooms over the first years in their in their boats and covered the thestrals up to the gates up to the gate. Harry um and the others stood on the steps of the castle and wait uh, waiting for his friends and enemies alike. Shacklebolt had chosen the same spot to oversee the per, uh, per, uh, procession processions and he and Harry chatted amiably about inconsequentials as their eyes scattered, uh, scanned the approaching students their signs of threats uh, for signs of threats harry though had a single threat in mind and soon spotted the fair hair face he was expecting hello malfoy have a good summer Oh, <clears throat> hello, Malfoy. Have a good summer. Harry's cold tone bleed, a bl- bled the friendly words. For, for his part, Malfoy stopped on his way to the stairs, gave Harry a cold stare, and continued up to the castle. Up? Isn't he down? That's where the Southerns are. On the other other side of the steps, Hermione nodded at Harry, who tilted his head in acknowledgement. Now he just needed to get Malfoy to react. Go anywhere interesting during the holidays, did you? Harry could could uh, called after the boy. That got his attention. And is that supposed to mean? And what is that supposed to mean, Potter? 
Draco drawled. Harry smirked. The boy had to be worried that Harry knew. Oh, I just thought you'd ha- been to ask Ban for a family reunion. I hope your father got his own room. It's getting rather crowded in there, I hear. But at least everyone knows your their neighbors. Amazing how many Malfoy family friends are being sent off these days, isn't it? Malfoy glared but kept his temper in check. Harry wor- uh, worried he was going to have to work harder on the- at this. The other boy, however, lashed out verbally. At least my family has friends, Potter. Your dead, pa- um, dead parents don't socialize much, do they? Don't you dare speak about my parents, Harry snarled and threw himself at Malfoy and caught him. I'm prepared. Rather than fight, Draco chose to turn and flee. He almost got away, but Harry managed to catch his sleeve. The satisfying shriek of torn fabric left Malfoy's arm bare. Harry t- grabbed the boy's wrist before um, before he could hide his forearm. Everyone happened it, everything happened so quickly. Shacklebolt had hadn't even seen haven't even had the time to call Harry to stop his attack. The aura stormed over to the pair. Harry mercilessly yanked Harry uh, Malfoy's arm straight, displayed the mark to Shacklebolt, who immediately bound the young Death Eater in magical ropes. Crab and Goyle, Malfoy's trusted guards had taken a step forward to help but the moment his arm was exposed they had stopped advancing and were trying to uh, fade back into the growing crowd shacklebolt took control of the situation professors i must ask you to divide your students into houses immediately no one will be entering the school for the time being he turned to to his team of horrors Several of them, recon- whom recon- Harry recognized, ordered and ordered, split up with uh, split up with the professors and check every student for the mark. Hell yes, Harry, you did it! Why am I cheering? <laughs> I'm so into this story. I feel like I'm like part of the group and just I'm Fortnite dancing on these hosts. <laughs> just Fortnite dancing on the um. Doing the L dance on, uh, I think that's what it's called, on um, <laughs> Draco, <laughs> loser. Split up with the professors and check every last student for the mark. I don't care what the Board of Governors has said about the searches. We have proof of at least one Death Eater here. And this is now not uh, out of their ju- jurisdiction. Satisfied, Harry rolled up his the sleeve of his robes, displaying his arms that were was purely a formality, and said to Shacklebolt, "I can watch Malfoy if you like, sir. I'm sure he's not going anywhere with your spell on him." Thank yes, thank you, Harry. He gestured for Ron and Hermione to join them. The two displayed their arms without being asked. Will you two stay here with Harry just in case? The two agreed naturally, and Shacklebolt strode off to see that his orders were being followed. Nice spell, Hermione. Harry showed her sleeve, the uh, her the sleeve he was holding. The stitches looked like they were cut with scissors. You should take up dressmaking. <laughs> Th- oh, why? Thank you, Harry. It. it it's a simple it's a simple enough spell to cast. It weakens the threads. It's a bit difficult to fo- uh, focus it on a moving target though. And to only have it affect the seam instead of fabric of the fabric of the sleeve. That's the trick, uh, you see. If you hit the, uh, the whole sleeve, you'd just have to have torn it torn off the bit at the end and his forearm forearm would have would still be covered 
Harry was feeling very pleased with her. With her,、uh, Hermione was feeling very pleased with herself. Harry was enjoying was enjoying it. He she took the cloth、uh, cloth from Harry. Do you mind if I keep this, Her- Malfoy? I'm sure you understand. It's a. I'm sure you understand. It's so difficult for us mudbloods to cast anything right. I'd like to a keepsake. She smiled sweetly at her captive, who was glaring at her. Harry nearly took a step back in shock. He had never seen that kind of malevolent, malevolent, malevolent. I can I know what the it is, but my tongue doesn't want to say it. Malevolence, malevolence. There we go. And Draco. Ron was not so off put off, however, and said, "It is true that that is true, Hermione, but it makes you want wonder why a mud blood like you always manages to outdo a pure blood like Malfoy here." It's not nice to say such things, Ron. Hermione said, feigning shock. Even mudbloods like Malfoy's produce a occasional squib, but you shouldn't shouldn't talk about about things like that in front of them. You probably you really should know better. With a final satisfied smile at Malfoy, Hermione turned her back in the、uh, on the boy and watched the professors check the remaining students. When it came time to search Crab and Goyle, they made it nearly three steps to,、uh, toward Hogsmeade before Orrus stunned them. Of course, Shackle、uh, Shacklebolt had known of the markings as soon as Harry had seen them, so the Orrus knew exactly who to worry about. Parkinson and later、uh, and later Summers su- succumbed to hysterics when they were approached. Not looked looked to be making some attempt at dignity, wh- while the Ravenclaws simply looked resigned. No doubt they had given great thought to their、um, homecoming and. Be- uh, Believed themselves safe. Harry, Ron, Hermione, and eventually Ginny, Neville, and Luna were gathered around seven young Death Eaters, while the the last of the students were checked. Harry's relief to see、um, seemed there had been no more markings since the one he had witnessed. Finally, Harry Her-、uh, Draco spoke, startled. Uh, spoke. Uh, finally, Draco spoke, startling Harry. His voice was emotionless when he sa- asked, "How did you know?" Harry had been prepared for this question, as soon as he had mentioned the sleeve to Hermione. I'm not stupid, Malfoy. You may have. Underestimated my intelligence, but I wouldn't expect anything less from someone who'd follow that monster. Of course, you were you were going to take the mark. I was. It was worth risking a detention to make sure, though. He had not planned on saying anything more, but found himself staring at the seven. I'm sure you all hate me. Some of you may even hate me for something other than being the boy who lived. Anyway, I know you probably don't care what I have to say, but I'm saying it anyway. If you want to get out, you can help. We can help you. Dumbledore can help keep Voldemort from hurting you through the mark. You just need to ask him. He'll say yes. We we know he will. You know he will, and I don't know if you're allowed to read. Where you're going, but if you are, look up Tom Marvolio Riddle. It's an anagram, actually. You can ask your father about about him too, Malfoy. But I don't know if he'll tell you the truth. It's not hard to figure out, though. Check out his family tree, and 
then take a look at when he disappear disappears from all records. What are you getting at, Potter? Malfoy asked, still ma- masking all emotion. Just, I just think you all should know who you're going to prison for, and who you're all so willing to die for. Shacklebolt interrupted, but Harry had said what he wanted to, so they all watched in silence as he and the other Aurors surrounded the students and apparated them off to trial and surety of prison. With a sigh, Harry turned and fo- um, followed the rest of the school into the dark, uh, into the great hall. A battle had been won. Seven Death Eaters were off to Azkaban. The oldest of them was seventeen. Harry sighed again. Wait, who is the seventeen-year-old? I didn't think Draco. Wait. Was the raven called the oldest? Like, not? Or was it... Because I thought Crab and Goyle was the same age as Malfoy. And... Uh... Not was younger than Malfoy. So it must be the Ravenclaw, right? Or is not the Ravenclaw? <laughs> I forgot which one's the Ravenclaw. And then which one's the Hufflepuff. I'm so confused. Well, Parkinson's. Is she older? Or is she younger? I think it's Draco who's 17. So, Harry must be almost 17. Okay. After dinner, Snape caught Harry's eye as the students shuffled out of the hall. The potion master pulled him into the shadowed shadowed corner and said, Harry, I was going to tell you that I will be in your... In my... You will... I will be in my classroom preparing for class tomorrow if you cared to help. I can see that what happened today affected you, and as such, I will refrain from lecturing you from about that about the foolishness of it, as well as praising you for the cunningness. I think you do not need or want to hear either. At any rate, um... At any rate, having observed the Slytherin table tonight, I think it best if you do not spend time in the dungeons alone. Indeed, it would be best if you avoid being alone outside of your common room. Those seven were not the only students loyal to the Dark Lord, as you know. I understand, Professor, and thank you for the offer. Even if I, I can't, it can't be made. I would have taken you up on it, I think. But I should be in the Gryffindor common room tonight. Uh, Gryffindor tower tonight. I suppose I, I want to, to ask everyone not to gloat about what ha- happened. I don't think my friends will, but I'm sure people noticed that Gryffindor was the only house with a full table tonight. Nothing good will come from trying to shove that in the other house's faces. I'll try to get my house to see that. I'm happy to hear that, hear you say that, Harry. Harry blushed at the praise and tried to cover his embarrassment with a joke. Plus, it's tradition that the first years get to kiss the hem of Harry Potter's robes on the first night of the school. And Ron says it's not fair if I'm not around and they have to find an old robe from my trunk. They feel left down, like, uh, left down if I'm not wearing it when they're uh, um, genuflecting. Okay. Snape's lips curled in a subtle display of amusement. Harry had been expecting and said, Go. Oh, man. That was pretty funny. I I enjoyed that one. Man. uh, I had too much fun. That was... That was a really good one. I, um, I enjoyed that. I don't know why, though. Ooh. 
I guess I'm really... I'm really into those really weird ones, I guess. I, <laughs> But I'm going to read more, okay? Come on! I don't care about the stupid ad. <laughs> Help me! Okay. Okay. Chapter 18. Back in Gryffindor Tower, Harry discovered his intuition was right. He stepped into the common room to... Hear one of the fourth years talk about talking loudly to a group of firsts. Of course it was Harry Potter who caught Malfoy. Did you see that one of them was a Hufflepuff? You guys are lucky you're Gryffindors. None of us could would ever, ever join who you know who. That's enough. Harry stepped over to the group. Everyone says that Slytherins are dark wizards. And maybe they have more than their share. But bragging that Gryffindors don't get marked is stupid and wrong. I know for a fact that at at least one of us followed him in the last war. Everyone looked shocked at um, at the revelation. But no one was going to argue with him. I'm not saying I think... Someone here would ha- would ever do that. But it's not as simple as what house you're in. I'm not, a pr- I'm not perfect. I'm not a prefect. And I can't make any rules. But I don't want to hear about anyone in this house bragging about what happened. We lost seven students today. That's nothing to be happy about. Across the room, Ron stood up and said, Well, Harry, I'm a prefect, and I can make a rule like that, but I won't. Anyone who needs to try to make the other houses feel bad about what happened in order to make themselves feel good doesn't belong in Gryffindor at all. That's not not what we do. Harry was impressed at his friend's uh, strategy. Rules are broken, but he'd he'd made it a matter of house pride now. Harry suspected there would be no need to discuss it further. You said that better than I could have, Ron, Harry said in private. Thanks for backing me up. Anytime, mate. (laughs) That accent, I don't know where it comes from. I hadn't I hadn't thought about it, but you're right. If we go around acting like we're above everyone else, it's just going to make problems. Yeah, I can't say I'm sorry to say, say, see them getting what they deserve, but I still feel bad that it had to happen. I'm sure they had, they all had friends here. We wouldn't be gloating while everyone else is missing their housemates. Ron nodded. Still, the redhead, the redhead said, it was fun listening to Hermione talk to Malfoy. Harry chuckled. He really, he, he really had that coming, didn't he? Speaking of Hermione, where is she? Harry could see the first year girls in the common room as she was showing uh, she was not showing them the dorms so she was not showing them the dorms she ran off said she had to meet someone she saw uh, she saw i saw her talking to a huff to a boy from hufflepuff before i think she was meeting him for something and you're okay with that harry asked grinning b- broadly sure why not harry grew, ron grew worried hey you don't think she's in danger, do you? Someone getting revenge for getting their friend arrested? Oh no, that's that's what I meant. Yeah, I'm sure she's she's fine. She can take care of herself. Um, no one really knows she was involved with the whole thing. Ron agreed and said, said, speaking of that, Harry, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be alone in the halls anymore. 
you said yourself that anyone could be angry about what happened. Not to mention that there are probably other supporters of you know who in the in the school. You're starting to think think just like Professor Snape, you know. He said the same thing just before I came here. Normally, that would be a very disturbing thought, but I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm just going to be happy he agrees so he can give you detention if you don't listen. I'd feel better about having to dock you points, you know. They're my points, too. Harry laughed. As much as he understood Snape's concerns, he did not need he did not like the idea of bringing up the problem with his friends. There there seemed something snobbish about asking friends to follow him around. They would do it, of course, but he hated asking. He spent the rest of the evening in the common room getting to know the adi- new additions. Experience that had taught him that the sooner they realized he was a normal person, the sooner he'd they'd stop treating him with fear or awe. Hermione arrived not long after Harry had asked about her. He could tell she ha- wanted to talk to him, but was waiting for him to be free. By the grin she was wearing, she- he assumed it was good news. His his curiosity was finally satisfied when Hermione pulled him over to a quiet corner. Well, Harry, she said. What? Yes, you're very pretty. What? You have to come up here so I give you loves. Come on. Hi, pretty kitty. Yeah, my cat wanted to come over. If you haven't heard her meows. His curiosity was finally satisfied when Hermione pulled him over to a quiet corner. Well, Harry, she said, I had some interesting talk with someone a little bit ago. I figured that. What's going on? You weren't asked out, were you? Hermione covered her mouth in a to stifle a laugh. No, no, that's not at all. It's very funny you said that, though. No, someone asked me for a favor. It seems he wants me, wants to start a club for... She looked around for anyone listening. Well, for people like you, if you know what I mean. It's for boys and girls so they can talk and get support, I guess. Oh, an LGBTQ community. Oh, that's so sweet. Now it was Harry's turn to stifle a laugh. You didn't think... He didn't think you were... No, at least I don't think he did. He just wanted to know if I could make a sign-up sheet. Like uh, we did for the DA. He said he might want, want coins too. But he has no idea how many people would be interested. For now, the parchment will just be a way to keep people keep out people who only want to make trouble who is it harry asked hermione frowned well i promise not to tell anyone obviously i'm not worried about you telling people harry but it's okay hermione i made the same promise to the person i told you before remember It's not your secret to tell. I understand. I did tell him that I know someone who might be interested. I hope you don't mind, Harry. I just wanted to make sure I was allowed to even mention it to people. Of course, I didn't give any names. Hey, you you don't think the person who asked me is the person you were talking about, do you? Harry laughed. <laughs> no, I think it's safe to say that the person I know isn't starting any clubs. Well, if you're interested, let me know and I'll see about getting you to sign the parchment. I'll think about it, Harry replied. 
The following day at breakfast, a new addition sat at the head of the table beside McGonagall. Harry was surprised to see Histia, Histia Jones with the faculty, but she gave, uh, but she gave, uh, but gave her a cheer, a cheery, cheerful wave when he caught her eye. Harry, along with the rest of the school, assumed that she would be the new head, new defense instructor. Once it seemed most students had made it into the great hall, the headmaster stood and ro- raised a hand, calling us for silence. Good morning, students. I trust everyone is recovering from shock of yesterday's surprise. I will remind you all that should uh, that should you require someone to sp- speak to about the unfortunate loss, I, your he- um, and your heads of houses are always available. A fresh silence fell the students. However, I spoke enough of that yesterday. Today, I I am pleased to announce some good news in the form of our new Defense Against the Dark Arts instructor, Professor Jones. The woman nodded (laughs) amably. Oh, my tongue. Uh Uh-huh. But did not stand when Dumbledore turned towards her. Professor Jones is recent recently retired. Aura is re- is a recently retired Aura, and will and will certainly prove a most excellent addition to Hogwarts. Please welcome her. Polite applause greeted the announcement, though cheering came from the group of Gryffindors who knew her to be more than an Auror and were grateful to to again have a trustworthy, um, um, competent teacher. Ginny absolutely beamed. Jonas, well, while not being not quite young enough to be an older sister was still young enough to fill the role of a favored aunt i'm so glad she's here jenny said keeping her voice low so only the close-knit group of friends could, would hear until harry got to the house mom and dad dropped me and ron off when they had to go away from the burrow she just she was just the only person I had to talk to. She was too young to fight in the war, but my parents did. My mother was killed by you know who himself in the middle of the war. Wait, who's talking? Yeah, it's Jenny. What? Oh, her mother. I was like, my mother, what? Her mother was killed by you know who himself in the middle of the war her dad died last winter i'm i'm not sure how but i think it was something natural she's been an or an or since she left hogwarts and i don't think she has any family left she had a boyfriend i think he was killed by death eaters not too long ago harry blinked ron blinked at her Wow, sis, you could teach Hermione a thing or two about research. Ginny giggled. Hermione elbowed the boy. Well, we talked a lot in the beginning of summer. Sometimes she'd almost say something. Mostly if I was talking about Dean. I'd say something and she'd laugh or agree, then start to tell a story and then just stop. I guess she didn't want to talk about it, so I never asked. Anyway, uh, things were kind of quiet until the night Harry showed up, uh, after all, and I would think she was bored and maybe a little lonely, like me. Then, of course, everyone got uh, got so busy, she never really saw anyone but Professor Snape. And sometimes Remus. And no one, uh, no one would tell us anything about where anyone was. I'm glad she's okay. 
I think it's great she is she's here, Harry said. We've only ha- ever had one good defense instructor and it take an or to last more than a year. That won't be a problem for her, Jenny replied, her respect evident. She told me magical defense is her specialty. Whenever a group of really nasty wizards were holed up somewhere, she'd send her it, they'd send her in for bait. Nothing can be can get through her shield, so the other aurors would take down the attackers while they were trying to hex her. Sounds brilliant, Neville said. Too bad she wasn't around this summer, then we we were learning stuff about like that. Plus, the more teachers, the fewer lessons with Snape, eh? Ron asked. Neville nodded vigorously. As appetites dwindled and students began making their way from the hall, Luna found her way to the table and joined the group. Neville explained how they knew Histia Jones, the quiet girl, only replied with one of the disconcerting smiles. Once the room was nearly empty, Ginny said she wanted to greet the new professor. We'll go with you, Harry said. She was one of the wizards who got got me last year from the Dursleys. Wait, Histia Jones. Histia Jones. Hold on. That name sounds so familiar. I just, I can't place it anywhere. Histia Jones. Movie? Was she in the movies? Images. I don't remember her. Um, Harry Potter movies. Uh, I don't think she was in the movies. Huh. She was in the video game. <laughs> I know that, but she's not in the... She was only in the book and the video game. Hmm. Weird. Uh, la- um, least I can do is welcome her here. Harry and Ginny stood up and were naturally followed by the rest. With only a few professors within earshot, Ginny nearly squealed. I'm so glad to see you. We've been worried about you. No one would tell us anything about where anyone went. I was sure you were okay, of course. Who can hurt you, right? But still, Histia smiled at the girl and took her hand. It's good to see you, too. (laughs) Wait, what? Ginny, and the rest of you, too, of course. Welcome to Hogwarts, Professor Jones. Harry said everyone else echoed him. I'm glad you came to see me now, Jenny. This summer was not quite quite my best. I'm, I've been at St. Mongo's for the past four weeks. Jenny stifled a gasp. You'd find out, of course, in class, but I think it's best that you know now. Professor Snape stood and came to Jones's side. His whispered... He whispered something in her ear, and she looked up at him with a faint smile. Yes, please, thank you, Severus. With a nod, Snape offered her his arm. She grasped it, and she struggled to stand as um, was not lost on anyone gathered. Snape pulled the chair out of her way as she straightened up slowly. A wide belt on the outside of her robes would looked distinctly out of place until she tapped the belt with her wand and she rose lightly so her toes were barely on the ground. The look she gave Ginny was absolutely almost apologetic. Seems my shield 
shields were not quite as good as I, I hope, had hoped. Oh, Histia! Ginny gingerly stepped forward and pulled the woman into a hug. What happened? Does it hurt? No, Ginny. I, I'm in no pain. I can't feel anything at all below my waist, actually. The spell used uh, was dark magic and the damage cannot be undone. As for what happened, the details don't matter. Let's just say I, fa- I faced one Death Eater too many this time. It was, I was due, right? Though she tried to mask it with a light-hearted joke, Harry could f- hear it in her voice. The few students remained, watched the scene with interest. And though they would not hear, they would certainly be wondering why a student was hugging the new professor. It was not lost on Snape, naturally, but who placed a hand on Jones's arm. Professor, perhaps I should show you to your classroom. I am told you arrived last night and did not had any opportunity to tour the clock castle. Jenny pulled back and wiped her tears on her sleeve. Thank you, but that is not necessary. I was a student here, of course, and it hasn't been that long. Another nod from the potion master, and the two instructors exited the hall. The effect on Harry, at least, was eerie to watch. Hestia's belt must have been charmed with a levitation spell. She floated to the door, and Snape had a way of gliding about with his long, swift strides hidden by his robes, making it seem as if he wore the same belt. It was Luna who turned to Jenny first and comforted her. She could have suffered much worse. She doesn't feel any pain, right? And she can still go wherever she wants. (laughs) I suppose, Jenny sniffled. We've got charms together next, Luna said to the group. She put her arm around Ginny's. She'll be okay. As the six-year um, Gryffindors made their way... So they're almost seniors, correct? Is that how this is? Like, they're juniors, like in high school. Because there's only seven years, correct? Or is it eight years? I could be wrong. <sighs> how many years are in Harry Potter? Many years... Is graduation in Harry Potter? No, that doesn't say anything. How many years does a wizard have to go through Hogwarts? Seven. So he is a he is a um a junior. Okay. So I get it. Okay. I had to make sure because I didn't want to sound stupid. Okay, anyways. As the six-year Gryffindors made their way to their classes, Harry sighed. You know, I was wondering why she was here teaching, not out, you know. Everyone trudged along in silence, but not wanting to say anything aloud. I think I'd rather have Lockhart, or even Umbridge back, than get a good teacher that, that way. Still, no one else spoke. No one had to. No one had to because they probably all agreed. They don't want to receive a teacher like that. They we they would like her as a teacher, but not in the way they had. By the end of the week, Professor Jones's 
presence was causing quite a stir. In the classroom, she was dynamic and engaging. Years as an aura had given her a story for any occasion, as well as an appreciation for un- unusual and in- in a- innovative ways to handle dark magic. She was strict and had very high stand high standards but she held everyone to them equally and no one was sure what house she had come from as she seemed no um to hold no preference speculation abounded of of course but most theories were attempt uh, attempts of members of each house to claim that the professor as their own. Even some Slytherins had could be heard insisting she was far too cunning to have worn anything but silver and green as a student. Many of the boys, and, and statistically, Harry thought some of the girls were developing crushes despite her ha- um, handicap, which she may made no attempt to hide. She was certainly pretty enough, and along those lines came rumors that sent Harry into private bursts of laughing every now and then. Snape's in love was whispered in the hallways, and many many a student had been in the uh, on the end of one of one of his withering stares. For so much as daring to to knowing, daring a knowing look at the potions master. It was no wonder, though Harry thought only natural that the students would jump to conclusions. After all, whenever Professor Jones seemed to need any kind of help at all, Professor Snape appeared at her side. Every meal, though he sat in several places down the table from her. Snape pushed uh, in her chair as she sat and offered her, offered his arm in aid when she rose. Lavender had proclaimed it simply charming, and Harry completely agreed. Well, I'm pretty sure that when she was being tortured or anything that happened to her against the Dark Lord, she probably was fighting against... Snape was the, probably the guy who had to fix her or like heal her in the end and he couldn't heal her all the way and he probably feels responsible. That's my conclusion. With the rumor mill in full grind, Harry hung back afternoon one afternoon after potions. Ooh. And the last class of the day to have a bit of fun with his professor. The soon the room had cleared, leaving Harry alone with Snape for the first time since school started. Started. Uh, I don't know where this is coming from. Help me. <laughs> Harry made sure the door was closed before saying, If you aren't careful, Professor, you're going to have half the boys at Hogwarts looking to hunt you down. <laughs> Snape looked up from his de- desk coolly. Only half. I are you dismally, dismally, underappreciative of my abilities to be a bastard. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? If you were being a bastard, you wouldn't be showing, um, showering Professor Professor Jones with such devotion and affection. Harry grinned and sprawled lazily in the one of the front desks. On one of the one, um, no, in one of the front desks. Oh, I see. And has per- Professor Jones so quickly captured the hearts of many hormonal laden children? <laughs> sure has. I personally don't see it. I mean, she's nice and all. Not your type, is she? Snape played along. Not quite, but. Everyone everyone sure thinks she's yours. <laughs> Speaking of that, though, Hermione found out there's a group of... Harry decided discre- discretion was virtue in, in a classroom. Even with the door closed, anyone could walk, still walk in. Well, students like me, she made up a, them a sign-up sheet like she did for the DA. 
Snape no, um, nodded and observed. How sense... How nice such students still need to be paranoid. Have you joined this group? Before he could answer, Harry was interrupted by Snape's raised hand. First consider if there is anything going on that I will be happier not knowing about... About. I am a teacher, remember? Harry blushed. It's nothing like that. Just a few kids sitting and talking. Mostly about dumb stuff. Like who everyone thinks is cute. Does this mean you have will find yourself a mate rather than making a habit of interrupting my afternoons? Harry, uh, Harry wrinkled his nose in thought. I hadn't really thought about it. To be honest, well, I, I did, I did before I signed up, but not really since. I don't think so. There's no one that there, there I'm interested in. I'm not sure. I'm. Ugh, I will keep going. Honestly, everything they say about seems so. I don't know. Silly, I guess. If I have to hear about. What someone wore to Hogsmeade weekend, um, to Hogsmeade weekend last year again, I'll be in your office looking for something to make my head explode. It's nice to know there are some students out there like that, like me, but they never want to talk about anything serious. First, the potion you would, you'd want to find want is found in my office on the third shelf fourth from the left in the green glass bottle help yourself as for talking about as for talking about something serious it's been my experience that attempting to be to have a serious conversation with anyone under the age of 24 is pointless you should be you should not be so serious yourself for the matter for that matter you are after all 16 and true and trivialities are expected to have to be the focus of your existence harry simply snorted at that a week later harry found himself back in the potions classroom having almost the same conversation this time with hermione everyone else's potion had turned into a clay into a a clay-like substance, 20 minutes after brewing. And only Harry and Hermione had any liquid to continue working with. The potion done, now done successfully, Snape trusted them enough to retreat, um, to retreat to his office as they cleaned up. I don't know, Harry said. I do appreciate you telling me about it. I'm glad I went and all, but... I just, it's just so insane. (laughs) What? Hermione stared at him. You've been spending far too much time with Professor Snape. If you, in no, inane, never heard of it. I think it was insane, but I guess not. If you're using words like inane. Harry laughed a little and said, You're just too childish, I guess. Aside from us all being gay, I just have nothing in common with them. I'm spending more time worrying about Remus. If if Remus will make it back from his next mission, or if Voldemort has figured out a way to break into my head again, and they're making stupid jokes about their wands and different kinds of vegetables. Ooh, we know that type of um P O R N. <laughs> I I was my friend was like, "Watch this one." It was a um brother and sister. The brother carved a pumpkin, put his, you know what, in the pumpkin and the girl he's like, "Grab the seeds out for me." And he's like, she had to put her hand and he's like, "Oh, these are so squishy." And then his mom came into the room. And told him to stop doing that. And he pulled his thing out. And she was just so pissed. And I was like, uh, I would be too, bro. Why would you, like, do that? That's gross. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hate my friend after that. <laughs> I guess I can't, I can understand that, Hermione replied. She let out a little sigh as they gathered their books. It's not your fault, you know, and I am glad you told me about it. Oh, I was just hoping you'd find someone. Oh, I just I was just hoping you found someone. I I I was thinking about how hard it must be to meet people. Harry simply shrugged. Well, I thought the same thing at first, but none of them are really what I'm looking for. What are you looking for then? Pete's me. Not fireworks and violins like the, in the movies. I just want someone who cares how I like my tea, you know, someone who I can lean against while we both read. He'll interrupt every now and then, then point out something I'm completely uninterested in, and I'll pretend to be mad because I'm trying to read my own book. But we'll both know I don't mind. Harry rested his chin on his hand and stared into space. My whole life's been so complicated, I just want something simple. Harry leaned forward and gave Harry Harry a kiss on the cheek. That's very sweet, Harry. And I think I understand what you mean. Even though, personally, I expect fireworks and violins. Harry smiled at, her, at his friend. As the two got, uh, got up to leave, Her, um, Snape um, reappeared from his office. Have you two finished cleaning? Good. Can you stay a little longer, Harry? Whoa! He pulled out the first name in front of Hermione. This is... this. Ooh! I wonder what he... um If he heard what he wanted. <clears throat> okay. There is something I need to discuss with you. Snape gazed at Hermione for a few m- moments before saying, You may stay as well, Miss Granger. They both ne- uh, nodded and sat down. And why did you pull out the first name when Hermione's there? You said you would only, like... Mm. Information has come up my way. This is information that Dumbledore also pro- possesses. Though yet he does not know, I I have it as well. As such, he's not yet asked me to keep it from you. Are we clear? Harry understood the implication. When Dumbledore did talk to Snape, he'd be ordering that Harry be kept ignorant. Dumbledore had nearly promised not to do that. But Harry trusted Snape's opinion. Furthermore, I need you to promise me that you will not overreact and you will absolutely refrain from purposely digging for information your source while being well um while while well placed is far too dangerous. Do you understand? I'll stay right here, I promise. <laughs> His, um, Harry tapped his head, aware that while someone may listen in, it was far less likely, far less likely they could see him, see him. Snape nodded, satisfied. Lupin has gone missing. Well, shit. <laughs> What is this? The second time in this in this series? Ugh. He's worse than Harry. Oh my gosh. He was safe two days ago, but after that, we there are no clues. Harry grew pale. The only thing keeping him from running from the room was the knowledge that the only person with answers was standing before him. Now, before you assume anything, Harry... Remember that Lupin has been doing this for a long time, even before the Dark Lord's rise, since he graduated, really. He was he has been on the run simply because of what he is. 
He knows Hold on. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm having a a fight with someone over the internet. <laughs> I don't know why I would say that. You lost that respect when you cheated on my, when you cheated on my, on one of my oldest friends. I'm talking to a person who thinks, um, there's no such thing as racism's against white people so um i lost some brain cells after saying that so let's go on (laughs) harry remembered that lupin has been okay he has been i lost my place sorry um he knows how to sense danger and he knows how to disappear that we have no trace whatsoever is in my opinion a good sign it is unlikely that an abduction would be covered as well as lupin can hide his tracks his own tracks and he has enough wolfsbane for the coming full moon which may work to his advantage harry cal- um, calmed a little Remus was probably in danger, but he may still be safe. And Snape was right about the full moon. And a sentient, logical werewolf was far better off in a dangerous area than even a wizard. I am telling you this for a reason, Harry. If the worst has happened, as I believe it has, then... He will certainly be taken before the Dark Lord until he know, until we know something for sure. I want you to be extra careful with your occlumency. If motion, emotion plays a part on both sides, then Lupin's capture will be cause for great joy on the other end. I am trusting your word that you have not been attempting to spy though your your trick at breakfast before before the term started was not lost on me harry squirmed as he had not realized the man had caught on harry's swift swift dip into voldemort's mind the day after luna's rescue in any case the next few days may um may present the opportunity to witness something you surely want never to see harry swallowed hard thank you professor for the record um except for the last time i haven't tried any um tricks i wasn't planning on it either but I will make sure my shields can hold up against anything. Satisfied, Snape looked at Hermione and said, As for you, Miss Granger, I understand you have some questions for me pertaining to this research project. The girl looked up sharply. Yes, sir, but she frowned. Snape stood and beckoned them to follow. Snape led his students up to the potions classroom, out of the potions classroom, down the hall to his room, own rooms. See, um, being seen with Potter and Granger was no longer a threat to him. He could be in a, no greater danger at this point, but there was still a need of secrecy. 
He stood facing the wall, gave uh, the Salazar bust an expectant glare. The piece of rock made a decent doorkeeper, a decent doorkeeper, um, usually, but now and then decided to make a point of showing that its duties were by choose uh, by choice and not by command. Not a stone eyelash. Uh, not a stone. Not a stone eyelash fluttered, as the wall eventually disappeared into his at, into his arch. He trusted the statue felt its point, and been made has had been made. Snape waved the two in and followed. Ranger looked around curiously as Harry sat down on the couch. It was another display of fam- familiarity, but the boy had been in his rooms once before. The setting was private enough to ignore that he ha- he did not wait for an invitation to sit. The potion master settled into a chair and nodded for the girl to join Harry on the couch. Professor McGonagall tell Professor Professor McGonagall tells me you have questions about the mark. She seems to believe that you are the best position to uncover holes in our our own notes. Your own notes. He had never actually sat down and discussed the workings of the bond with anyone. Albus had some idea of what it did, but only through years of observation and gr- good deal of passive study of the mark. Severus was in no mood to talk about it now, but he was forced to admit that the odds of discovering how to break the bond were better now they had a... Uh, how to break the bond were better now than had ever been. Not only had Potter's intrusion into the Dark Lord's mind granard, garnered sorry, more information on the spells than anyone had ever gathered, but both he and his colleagues were far uh, freer to test and study the magic. Any act of work on the mark would require of course, Potter's presence. The man felt pang of guilt at the acknowledgement of the further study as was likely to cost the boy and and made a promise to limit such work as much as possible. Have you read my notes, sir? Have you read my notes, sir? No, I did not feel that was necessary. There is nothing pertaining to the scar that I do not know of, yes? He directed the question at Harry. Almost everything Hermione has is what you and I worked out during our lessons. I can't think of anything I don't know. Now that Snape knew he could slip into Voldemort's mind at will, the charade was past. Then what is it? You need to know, Miss Granger. Always studious, she pulled out a qu- um, quill ink and yet another notebook from her bag. Well, let me tell you what assumptions I've made. We'll see the f- if the foundation's right. Then we'll we'll worry about filling the gaps. Maybe Harry can try connecting connect it all with what he's seen with the Dark Lord. Snape Snape answered questions until it was time for the three to get ready for dinner. Harry seemed preoccupied, but for the um for the most part was attentive to the dis- um discussion. The girls' questions was astute, and Snape grudged, uh, grudgedly acknowledged to him to himself that she had made several accurate assumptions about his mark. As the potion master escorted the pair to the hall, his unease at discussing his bond to the Dark Lord was cooled 
somewhat by the satisfaction that his plan had worked and Harry had been at least mildly distracted from worrying about the werewolf. Oh, that's nice. So we're going to end it there. But um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm just, I'm a little tired now. <laughs> uh, that took a lot out of me. And I just, I just got something back from the girl I was talking to about. And, um, she was saying that my friend was, let's just say, not very nice all-around person. You know what I mean? And, um, that's what happened. And I don't really, I can't really say yes or no to it. But, I don't know how we got to this point when I posted something that, um... No, I'm not saying that this is all black people, but I put on a post that said, um, because I agreed with them. Some people, some African American people have come out and said this about whites. Hold on a second. I'm not going to talk to you for a second, Sandra. Um, here. My post says, notice how Jews are not harassing innocent Germans for the Holocaust. But some, well, it doesn't say some, but it says black people are harassing innocent white people for slavery. If you haven't heard, there's this policy that is trying to be passed, and it's been trying to be passed for, like, I don't know how many years now, um, that um, people that ha are descended from slave owners should pay African American the, uh, that were slaves that came over, pay their aunts for their ancestors doing. And I'm like, well, I'm not a slave owner. I'm never going to be a slave owner. The last time I checked, um, I don't even know if my some of my ancestors were here during the Civil War. And I don't think I should pay for what my ancestors did. So I said that, and two different people came up to me. That was Sandra and a guy named Jeremy. And and I told him a situation. He's like, where did you find that? And I gave him the video. And and then uh, <laughs> let's just say um, my friend had some choice of words calling her the B word and stuff like that. And um, And, and then she was like, there's no such thing as racism against whites. But the definition of racism is um, being discriminated against a race. White's a race, apparently. Black's a race. Asian. So on and so forth. That they're all races. Which I just think is... Um, which I think is just absolute BS, because I think it's just the human race. We're just different shades. That's basically it. We're just different shades, we look different, so what? We're unique. We're absolutely unique. I just wanted to say that because everyone's beautiful, and I think you guys are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys for watching. You've been absolutely fabulous. Um, be happy, be healthy, and always be loving. Stay inside. Be safe. Don't go around people with COVID. Don't forget, asymptomatic is a thing. So, be happy, be healthy, and always be loving. Bye-bye. I love you guys so much. Bye.